Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Piram Prakasam. I am the Director of the Office of International Education at Ferris State University. Uh, glad to see you here. And uh, I'm going to introduce our university and, uh, and uh, talk about opportunities at Ferris State University if you're interested. So Ferris State University is one of the 15 public universities in the state of Michigan. Michigan is it's, uh, located centrally in the United States and uh, it's very close to Canada and our university is one of the 15 public universities in the state of Michigan. And we have around 12,000 students and we have international students from around 40 countries. And uh, the picture you're seeing is one of the days we celebrate. Uh, it's called the International Festival of Cultures. This year, it's going to be our 33rd year. We'll be celebrating it in April. So the picture we took is all the students participating in that event. That's what you're seeing in the front. Uh, with 190 different programs we have, with competitive tuition prices, Ferris is a very good institution for our students who would like to get American education. And so this is the map of the United States. The, the one, the, the picture you see on the left is where you see the red, uh, highlighted area, that is Michigan. It's very close to the Canadian border. And our university is located uh, right uh, in the middle. Uh, in the second picture, you can see a small dot in red, and that is uh, Big Rapids. That's where the campus is located. Uh, so if you want to really uh, uh, visualize where Big Rapids is, if you look at Chicago and Detroit, two of the big metropolitan cities in the United States, uh, Big Rapids is right in the middle, three hours uh, to the left and three hours to the right are those two big cities. And uh, there's a picture of the campus you see on the map. Paris is, a, 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 is located in a college town. A college town is typically uh, what is referred to as a, as a university college town. Primarily the university is the main employer. So everybody in the town either works for the university or works to, to related to the university in a position or a job and in a, in a shop or, a, or services. So primarily you are going to see half of the campus, half of the students in the town um, live on campus and some live off campus, but the rest of the half population in the town are uh, employees and, uh, and community members living here. So we have a population of 20,000, 10,000 are students who are studying in the university. So, and uh, just by the university, there is a big river uh, called the Muskegon River and uh, the rapids come from the water being choppy with uh, acid flow. So that's why it's called a big rapids. And the water drains in the Lake Michigan uh, from, from big rapids. Um, so you're seeing a picture of the campus. Uh, the big building you see on the leftmost corner top building is our library. And that's where the center of the campus is. And it's a very beautiful campus with a lot of modern facilities and very accessible to the classrooms, the residence halls, and also the dining facilities. So it's centrally located. It's in a small town. Basically everything is about walking distance, banks, the hospitals, and the restaurants, and everything is in walking distance. A very safe community, since it's a small town of 20,000 with half of them being students. So you're really living in a college town unlike uh, universities that are in big, big cities. And uh, we, we are a very hands-on practical university where every program that we offer has to be very practical. For example, the pictures you see, the first one is a television digital media production program where students are learning how to edit videos. And the second one is a welding program where we have uh, advanced instruments helping students learn how to weld. And uh, we have quite a few uh, technology at Ferris State um, that are advanced technologies where students are learning from CAD CAM to plastic engineering to digital animation game design. Many of the facilities we have are state of the art. And our College of Engineering is considered one of the largest engineering technology programs in the United States. So very attractive programs for students. And, uh, our housing facilities are pretty modern. We have around 15 residence halls of different types, depending on what you're, either you can stay in a single room or you can share, uh, you can have a shared room or you can uh, stay in suites where you would share common kitchen, but you can have your own rooms. Pretty modern facilities, very close to the dining facilities. 
So typically in American university, students like to live on campus so that they can avail all the facilities that the university has like from recreation centers, the swimming pools to gym facilities and so on. But some students prefer to live off campus. So first year, if you're less than 19, then the university requires you to stay on campus. Once you're 19 years old, you can choose to stay off campus. And some students stay off campus and then commute with the driving to campus. And, but it's still a small town, so you can drive in two minutes and you'll be on campus. Our dining facilities is fantastic, where students enjoy. And uh, there are significant flexible plans for you to choose from. Twice a meal you can eat on campus, twice a day you can eat on campus, or you can have multiple times you can eat on campus. And uh, the flexibility of it allows students to eat at any part of the campus because we do have three different facilities. So depending on where you are, you can reach to that uh, dining facilities and have. And the food is uh, locally prepared on campus. And uh, that, uh, there is quite a few opportunities for students to taste different types of foods. And in terms of campus life on campus, there are a significant number of student organizations that students can participate. For example, the pictures you see are some of the student organizations that are hosting different events. For example, there is a rock climbing on campus where students can uh, choose to climb rock and do exercise. There is a very big golf course. Students can go play golf or we have a football team, but also we have certain organizations that are cultural uh, certain organizations where, for example, the picture you see on the bottom right is uh, of our international students uh, coming together. So we have an organization called International Student Organization and they host a lot of uh, events and activities. And these are what is called as registered student sort of organization. So they get funds from the university to host different events and activities. And uh, the picture you see on the right top is actually our international students going to play golf, practice golf. So you're seeing our uh, students from different parts of the world uh, all practicing golf at uh, Florida State. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time talking about the, uh, the academic programs we have at Fair State. And, and that's really our uh, primary focus, so why we want you to uh, come to Fair um, As I had mentioned before, our programs are very hands-on practical. And uh, if you look at our academic programs, they can be broken down as engineering technology, our engineering programs. And then we have liberal arts and science pro programs. We also have business programs that are very hands-on practical. And then we also have health-related programs on campus. So if you look at the list of programs we have, we have five different types of computer-related programs. For example, we have a digital media software engineering where students not only can program, but also design engineering programs. We also have a computer information technology where students are learning how to uh, uh, create the networks and how to maintain servers and so on, which is a bachelor's degree or a degree program. We also have a computer information system program where students are learning how to connect uh, computer technology to business needs. We also have a cybersecurity program. It's one of our prestigious program ranked very highly in the United States. It's ABIT accredited, which means uh, it has the highest accreditation for engineering program, even though it's located in a business school. We also have a new degree program that is going to start in fall, which is September, this coming September, on artificial intelligence. It's a bachelor's degree program. So students have five different options to choose if they are interested in computer-related program. We also have several engineering technology programs. They are different from engineering degrees. They are very practical uh, degree programs in engineering fields. So it's mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, we have plastic and rubber engineering technology where students learn how to manufacture plastics and rubber materials. And we have an automotive engineering technology, heating, ventilation, and cooling. We have surveying engineering. We also have something called a facilities management. We have architecture and, and uh, sustainability. So these are all some of the engineering programs. We have biotechnology, biology, chemistry, industrial chemistry, and uh, history, psychology, social sciences, social work. And uh, so several options for students to choose in the arts and sciences areas 
Our business programs are pretty unique because they're all hands-on practical. For example, uh, we have a hospitality bachelor's degree program. We have uh, event planning. We have music industry management. We have data analytics. We also have the traditional accounting, finance, marketing, business administration. We also have very unique programs like golf management where students who have very good golf skills, they can become uh, um, proficient in managing a golf course and managing a golf club. We also have a tennis management program where students get a bachelor's degree in managing a tennis club. And our specialized programs are digital animation and game design. It's one of the 15 top ranked programs in the country. We also have a very unique graphic design program where students are learning applied aspect of uh, graphic design in the business setting. Beyond that, we also have a doctorate in pharmacy and optometry. And our admissions uh, at Ferris State uh, is based on your uh, high school, if you're applying for bachelor's degree, based on your high school transcripts and also your English proficiency. And um, we have a rolling admission, so students who are interested in applying to Ferris, um, they can apply anytime and it's a rolling admissions which means even if you're interested in coming in september you can apply now and then uh, uh we would admit you and then you can join us when uh, the classes start in september so you can apply anytime and this helps us uh, universities because the sooner you apply we're not having a lot of applications at the very end of march or april so we try to admit students as and when the application comes so that we're able to process as many as we could. And um, so the critical things are your transcript and English proficiency. And one of the attractive part about Ferris State is we offer scholarship to students who are academically qualified. Our best scholarship program is a $10,000 scholarship per year. It doesn't fully cover because these are state institutions. And typically you do not get a full scholarship to study in the United States. You only get partial scholarship, for example, if the tuition is around $20,000, half of the cost would be covered by the best scholarship we provide. Anywhere from uh, 1,500 to 10,000 US dollars in terms of scholarship. So what are the steps in terms of applying to Ferris State University? We have an online application and you complete the online application and then uh, you would have to send electronically by email a proof of an English proficiency. If you have taken TOEFL, or if you've taken ILITS or the new testing called the Duolingo, if you take any one of them, you can send your uh, scores to us electronically as an email. You can also uh, submit your transcripts as an electronic copy to us. You also are required because of US immigration laws, you have to demonstrate that you have sufficient funds to study at least for one year in the United States which comes to around $29,000. And then you have to send a copy of your passport and so that we know your full name as it is in your passport and your date of birth. And uh, quickly, the scholarship we provide are uh, very depending on your uh, G GPA. So if you send your transcript, we internally do that conversion from your system to the American system of 4.0 GPA. So our highest scholarship is for students who've got about 3.9 GPA with, as you see on the screen, the TOEFL or ILITS or SAT or Duolingo scores. And then we still offer scholarship for students with just a 3.0 GPA. It's a $1,500 per year with a TOEFL score of 65, six uh, ILITS or 1040 SAT or 95 Duolingo. So this would be very helpful for students interested in applying to the US. And if you're interested in any of the particular programs we offer, and depending on your GPA, you can get a very good scholarship to study at Ferris. Again, these are partial scholarships. They do not completely cover all your expenses. So you do have to demonstrate your ability to pay the rest of them all. The maximum would be around 29,000. But if you get a $10,000 scholarship, then you have to demonstrate you have $19,000 in funds that you can demonstrate as a bank statement either from your parents or from a sponsor that you have back home or somebody in the United States who can sponsor your education. And if you are a student who's transferring within from another university from either back home in your country or within from the US, 
you do get a transfer scholarship up to three for three years, you have fifty five hundred dollar. So the the previous scholarship amounts that I showed were all for freshmen students who are first time coming to study in a university, but a transfer scholarship for students who are coming from another university with a 3.3 GPA with 12 credits uh, maximum or minimum, and then you can transfer to Ferris and you get a scholarship. Are there any questions at this time you have? If you have, you can type it. If not, I can show you quickly the office page. Let me stop sharing the screen. Are there any questions you have at this time? If you have any questions, you can type it. I can answer them or I can show you the website for the university. So let me take the time to actually show our office page. So at this time, this is how, so if you go to ferris.edu, and I can show you, if you type in the university's name ferris.edu, and click on this admissions and aid, as you see on the big screen, you would be able to click on international admissions. That would take us take us to our office page. If you're an undergraduate student, you can type click on the undergraduate, and then that takes you to all the details of applying to Ferris State University. You can click on this link and apply now, or you can look at all the requirements. I'm also gonna take the time to show the staff in the office, so this is a link that takes you to the main page of the university of my office. And then you can see the staff. So, so as you can see my picture, I'm the executive director for international education at Ferris State. Valerie Campbell, whose picture is right below mine, is the international admissions coordinator. She's the one who helps students with applying. And, and Megan Housetran is our study abroad coordinator who helps American students to travel abroad. And uh, the, the person to the right of me is Lisa Van Dijk Bauer. She's the assistant director, also student advisor. And Jacob Van Laud is a recruiter. If you're interested in studying at Ferris, you can set up a appointment with us and Jacob will speak to you. And Daniel is our admission specialist who help with uh, uh, the back, back end work of uh, getting you admitted. So this is the team in the office. We would be very ha happy to help you. And if you have any questions, you can contact any one of us and you can reach us uh, through our website. As you can see, you can type in ferris.edu and type in international, and then you would be able to reach our office page. With that, I'm gonna stop and uh, let you ask any questions you may have. If you have no questions, uh, that means I've covered everything that you wanted to know. If uh, you have any questions, don't hesitate to type.